God has many things that are predestined, okay? And under that, under predestination, one of those things is election, okay? So that's a complaint by many Christians, or, or they say, I have a problem with that, that he's electing somebody before the foundation of the world, before they've even had a chance to do anything. He said he picked them out. All right. This is going to be a little bit different tonight. I want you to think upon this subject, uh, ladies, because we have Bible study tonight, but we're going to, I'm going to involve you in men's theology. Okay? Um, okay, now, as the question was posed um, last Friday, at Men's Theology. Um, this wasn't my topic until last night. I'll tell you, it got changed. I had a study, work of uh, study for a week on wisdom and Solomon, and it got changed last night. So, do the unborn that die go to heaven, and, or is there an age of accountability? And if so, what is it? Okay, so... We don't have a lot of time tonight, but I want you to think upon that question tonight. Uh, of course, it gets broader as you go up in age, right? Okay, you have a baby that is unborn and he dies. You might think you have the answer. Um, but what about the one that just comes out of the womb? What about uh, the six-month-old? What about the two-year-old? Um, anybody want to give a answer tonight? Any women? No men allowed tonight on this part. Not on this part. We, you can answer in, in a little while after we get into it, okay? Anybody have any ideas or any thoughts? Okay, Sherry, we want to hear what your thought is. Well, it's not my thought. I think I heard it preached or said or something one time that just like with people that are born, they're predestined. Okay. So are the unborn. Each one of us are predestined whether we're born or not born. Okay. That's good. That's good. Anybody else? Christine? Just the only example that I have about babies, even after they're born, eight days old apparently exactly, um, was David's baby that died because of this, um, his unrepentant sin, I guess. I don't know like exactly, but um, yeah, that he would see him one day. And so that was like yep. hope. Yep. I don't know if that qualifies for everybody or unbelievers, non-believers. I have no idea. Right. Um, right. But yeah, that's that's the only thing, and I'm really glad because I'm like, where is the age of accountability? That's a phrase that I was wondering if it actually yeah. is a yeah. statement or, from the yeah. Bible. Or so, is yeah. there one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think you're talking about when David and Bathsheba uh, had their affair, and they she got pregnant, and the baby died, yes. Um, okay, anybody else? Any other women tonight have a, a thought or some scripture they want to bring up? It's a hard subject, isn't it? Nobody else? Here's your chance tonight, women. See, you're under the gun just like we are. We can't. Okay, here we go. Just based on uh, testimonies from Christians that have had maybe a, a death experience and then they come back to life or one of their children do, um, I've heard it several times that they've seen like a an unborn child, a sibling, or one of their unborn children in heaven. And I guess to me that that says, you know, and and to go further with that, these children that saw this could never have known that that was, the, you know, that they were have, had a sibling that even died. The parents hadn't even shared that with them. So... I think just based on something like that, yeah, it's not a biblical-based answer for you, but um, 
I I do believe that they go to heaven. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Shelby? I think I've heard this somewhere when talking about this because I think it's hard to answer, you know, a definitive answer, but um, it's Genesis 18, 25. Uh Uh-huh. And the part is... um, shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just and just, I guess, resting in that promise when we maybe don't have an exact answer, but yes, you know, that the Lord will do what is just. Yes. And of course we believe that tonight, right? Amen. Okay. Anybody else? This is, these are the questions we get posed at, uh, on Friday night. We don't know the questions and we just come in and they get thrown upon us. Okay. Uh, McKenna and, uh, Elaine, I was just thinking of uh, Luke one fifteen, where it says that, um, I think it was John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit in his mother's room. Good. So, um, yeah, so I was just thinking of that because it's like not our doing, it's the Lord's. So he can put his spirit in, even in the womb in this case, um, because he's the one that saves, so. Um, but yeah, like someone else mentioned, like predestined, like he, um, there's another verse in Jeremiah, I think one five, it's like before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, I set you apart. And so that's like even before he formed us. So it's like, okay, then he's going to know who he's chosen because he knows he's like omniscient, omnipresent, all those things. So, um, I mean, ultimately, it's his, he will do it just again, like Shelby said, but yeah, okay. so that's what I was thinking, and the age of accountability, um, it isn't in the Bible, those exact words, I know, but um, I've also heard someone say, like, oh, what about, like, um, I think, like, disabled people or something like mm-hmm, that, like, mm-hmm. it's the same, almost, circumstance, like, mentally, and, like, I mean, it's not like they're unborn, but, like, it's kind of similar to, like, an infant in some ways. So, that's right. another thought. Good. Okay, Elaine? I think I kind of forgot my question. <laughs> but, okay. A baby that's unborn, aren't they considered pure? And if a baby is is born or passes right after birth... Or like a few months later, aren't they still pure, or are we all born sinners? Okay, yeah, that, that's good. That's good. That raises the question. Um, uh, they don't have no actual uh, outright sin, do they? I mean, as they do whatever, they can't, uh, you know, uh, do this or do that as we see sin as a human being does. So that's what you're saying. They can't do anything in the womb. So are they actual sinners, right? And then, you know, because I had watched a movie, and I just can't remember the name of it. Um, It was about a little boy that got real sick. It was based on a true story that his parents lived out, like in, I think it was like Western Nebraska or something. But, okay, his parents never told him about a baby girl that had she miscarried. But what was the name of that show, Heaven is for Real? He did say, really? I never seen, I never heard any of that. I watched that movie. Huh, that's true. Uh, too bad. But anyway, um, you know, because he said that he'd seen his sister in heaven, you know, so I didn't, I don't know, you know, just. Okay. All right. Uh, Shelby? I'm making Curtis find my reference. Um, just to answer the part about being pure as a baby, um, Psalm 51, five, uh, says, behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. So that's kind of what I thought of first. Like, okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. Okay. Christine. Okay. So then I have two questions. Okay. So, um, was it. Isaac and Rebecca that had twins, mm-hmm. and they were fighting in her womb. 
<laughs> so there was two nations. So I'm like, um, well, we're, I mean, is that a sin? They're like having a little, they're having a wrestling match in there. <laughs> I don't sure. know if that would be Could anything. Be. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and then shucks, I had another question. Oh, what does that mean in sin? I was conceived like where his parents were married. He was the seventh boy. So I was just wondering what that meant. Okay. Okay. Mary. So this isn't my like personal belief, but like I've heard um, people use this scripture um, to prove that you know the unborn and you know there is an age of accountability. First uh, Corinthians seventeen four, or excuse me, four, seven fourteen. First Corinthians seven fourteen, for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Elsewhere, else were your children unclean, but now they are holy. Okay, and so yeah. Okay, I've sure. Just, I've heard that. I don't personally believe that, but... Okay. All right. Well, we, we better get into it here because this we'll deal with that and a lot more. Um, tonight, we're going to try to marry some things tonight. Um, and those things are, uh, this question will be answered in the light of several questions we will pose tonight. Is man in a state of sin? Um, if man is in a state of sin, then how severe is it? How does God's election fit in with this man's fallenness? How does a new birth fit in with man's fallenness? Okay? These questions will answer, I believe, the above question tonight. Do the unborn that die go to heaven and or is there an age of accountability? And if so, what is it? Um, you can write down the scriptures and follow along up here if you want. The first question is man in a state of sin. Okay, and I'm going to go slow tonight. We may not even get hardly any of this, but I want to start out from the beginning because um, there are people that believe um, that man um, is not in a state of sin. Okay, that man... Now, I, I did hear this quote from... Uh, uh, Mr. Godfrey from Ligonier and R.C. Sproul that um, the evangelist uh, Charles Finney, he was one of the great evangelists, okay, um, that in his writings he believed that salvation was a, a possible without, uh, without any help that man could do it on his own accord, Okay. Now, they, they, they claim that is in his writings, okay? Uh, nevertheless, uh, if that's true, um, in spite of his belief, the Lord used him to evangelize, okay? Okay, let's start at Genesis chapter 2, 7 through 18 to get kind of a groundwork here. Genesis 2, 7 through 18. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of, all, of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil." And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison, and that, that is it which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is Delium and the Oink Stone, and the name of the second river is Gihon, verse 14. The name of the third river is Hidekel, that is which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. Now, we're going to go to verse 14, 14, 15 here, but I want to stop and say this too real quick. The reason I'm going through this passage, all this passage, because many people believe this passage is a, instead of being a narrative, they believe like it's an allegory, that it's not a true story. Okay? They believe this didn't take place, that it's not really historic. Okay? And I read that because... <clears throat> This is a historic story. It consists of real people 
real places. You've heard of the Euphrates River probably, okay? This is a real place, okay? And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helpmate for him. Now, we're going to skip. We've got to go to Genesis. I believe it's chapter 3, verse 1. So we got the man, we got the woman. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now let me back up a little bit too. We do have the commandment, uh, the Lord's commandment, that they not eat of the tree, correct? Everybody got that, okay? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst... Of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, And he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Okay? So, I will just mention this in passing, because we won't come back to this. After they sinned, um, were they out looking for God for help? Okay? No, they hid themselves, because they were naked. And they were afraid, by the way. Okay? Now let's go to Romans, chapter 5. 6 through 12. Now we're posing the question, is man, is, is he in sin? Is he a sinner? Romans 5, 6 through 12. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man one will, will one die, yet preadventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Okay? I don't think you can get much clearer on that, that it's passed to all men. Okay? Psalm 51, 1 through 5. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Okay? I think what it's talking about there, your question was, okay, was the act of making a baby a sin? No, but that baby's a sinner because its parents were sinners. Okay? Okay, 1 John 1, 6 through 10. 
If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one another with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and the truth and his word is not in us. Romans 3, 20 through 23. This is a pretty standard passage for Christians. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God is without the law, is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith, of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay? Is all everybody or just some? Okay. To me that answer that, that question is answered. I think for a many many Christians it probably is answered. There's a few that it's not. But second question how severe is that state of sin? How severe is that state of sin? Romans 3, 9 through 18. What then? Are we better than they? No, and no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin, as it is written. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God, they are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And that the, the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. This is Paul the Apostle writing this in Romans. And I'll let you take a guess where Paul got that information. We're going to go to Psalms chapter 14, 1 through 3. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt, they have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Paul was just saying what David had already said. Romans chapter 1, 8 through 25. We're going to go through this kind of slowly here. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request, if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end ye may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with, jo with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was led hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among the Gentiles. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So, as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, 
the just shall live by faith. Now he starts to go into verse 18 here and he says, for the wrath of God. For means because of this or look back because of this. He's not ashamed of the gospel, okay? He's not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So verse 20 looks like a contradiction because he says the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Well, if they're invisible, how do you see them? They're understood, it says, by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. This, by the way, is the verse that gives the indictment to all of mankind. Okay? Because verse 21, because that, when they knew God, every human being knows God. Up here they know him. Okay? They glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their foolish imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts <clears throat> to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. So the things that the, that the world don't want to do, they don't want to give honor and praise and glory to God. So they change that into something else. What they change it is in, into is many different things. Mostly, probably, is... Um, I'll go to church and I'll look good and if I do halfway good I'll make it to heaven okay that's something of their own design all right now I want to get into this John John 6 41 through 65 and I want you to remember the word for or therefore because it means because of this all right the Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. This is Jesus talking. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not amongst yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Now let's stop right there at verse 44. No man can come to me except the Father draw him. Now he's talking to the Pharisees here. Um, did he mean that they couldn't come to him physically, that they couldn't walk up to him? Okay? No. We, we know that's not true. So what kind of draw or what kind of coming to him does he mean probably? in your estimation. In saving faith, okay? No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God, he hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give him is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us? of his flesh to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
except you eat the, fle- the son of the fle- son of man, the flesh of the son of man, and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the fa- as the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. That is the bread which come down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna, and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, they said, This is a hard saying, who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Does this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. Now pay attention here. 64. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. Who betrayed him? Okay. And he said, therefore. What does therefore mean? Because of this. I said unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. So people, I think oftentimes they're pastors and a lot of people are have a conundrum with Judas. They think that he was uh, born again and that he fell. I don't think so. I think by this passage you can tell that he was not. Because Jesus says, therefore, because of this, He knew that he would betray him. He was not born again. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Isaiah 59, 1 through 8. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue hath muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies, they conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They hatch cockatrice eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Now remember, we're on the part of how fallen is man, okay? Are you getting the picture that he's pretty despicable? Romans 8, 1 through 8. There is therefore now no condemnation in them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His Son, His own Son, in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither can it be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Um, If the natural mind, if a man is fallen, if the natural mind is at enmity against God, How can a man um, look for, search for, and desire God? Okay? 
I was talking to somebody, and uh, on the route we were having this discussion a couple of days ago, and they said, well, I believe that what I do is I take, sometimes they try to use words to make it sound better. I try to take the lower stance so God has the upper stance. And I'm like, that's still a work of you wanting to take the lower stance. You're not even able to take the lower stance because your mind is at enmity against God. So there's no stance you want to take that's below him. Job 15, 14 through 16. What is man that he should be clean, and he which is born of a woman that he should be righteous? Behold, he putteth no trust in his saints, yea, the heavens are not clean in his sight. How much more abominable and filthy is man which drinketh iniquity like water. 1 Corinthians 2, 11 through 14. For what man knoweth the things of man, of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Okay? Is man a sinner? Is man a dead sinner? Yes. Third question, God's election in the light of man's fallenness. Okay, now we're going to start getting somewhere a little bit here. I think Sherry mentioned predestination. Okay. Um, we will get into that, uh, but I just want to mention predestination. Can anybody tell me what predestination is? Just quickly, because you can do it by... Pre and destined, right? Okay, you have a destination, and it's pre beforehand. Okay, God has many things that are predestined. Okay, um, and under that, under predestination, one of those th things is election. Okay, they're not they're they're closely tied, but they're a little bit different. <coughs> but this is God's election in the light of man's fallenness. Okay, God's election in the light of man's fallenness. Ephesians 1, 1 through 11. We, now we've determined that man's a sinner and that he's a wretched sinner, that he's apart from God, he can't come to God except the Father draw him, and that he's at enmity with God. Okay? Now, Ephesians 1, 1 through 11. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So who did he choose before the foundation of the world? Us. Having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Good pleasure of your will or his? His will. His will. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven 
and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Counsel of whose will? His will. Okay. Okay, now we're going to get into the meat of it tonight. Here we go. This is probably all we're going to have time for, but we're not going to get into the new birth, but Romans 9, chapter 1 through 24. We're going to try to cover this pretty good. Take it from the beginning so we can see that we're not getting around any kind of uh, uh, contextual stuff here. We're going to get the whole thing so we can see what it's leading up to. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. Uh, Christine touched on this a little bit. Just to kind of, She was on the outskirts of it here. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. That's quite a statement right there. He wishes he would, could be accursed from Christ for his kinsmen. I'm sorry, I don't think I could say that. To be accursed from Christ would be to go to hell, I would say, wouldn't you? Who are Israelites, his kinsmen who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises? Whose are the fathers and of whom, as concerning flesh, came Christ, who is over all, God blessed be forever. Amen. What he's trying to say there is that this all started out with the Israelites. God came to them. He gave his word. He gave all his statutes. When everybody else was on the outside, Israel had all his goodness upon them. Okay? Verse 6, Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Okay? So what he's saying is they bear the name Nation Israel, but not any, everybody in there is really God's children, okay? And if you don't believe that, we'll read this. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise, at this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah had, had conceived by one, even our father Isaac. Right? The two fighters, right? Okay. For the children, being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, interesting, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. Now let's stop right there. Are there two children in her womb? Okay. Who are they? Jacob and Esau. Neither haven't done any good, any moral good or evil. Okay, they haven't did anything that you can see, okay? They're in her womb. Haven't having done neither good or evil, that the purposes of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. So does God election, is he saying that he has elected one and not the other? Okay, well let's read on. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Okay? And as you well know in the concordance, if you looked up that that uh, word uh, hated, it means to love less. Okay? If you do a study on that and you look up um, Jacob, he had two wives. Okay? And the one said that the one was um, loved and the other was hated. Okay? Who were the wives? Rachel and Leah. Okay? And then it goes on to say, that 
just Jacob didn't have as much affection for the other wife. He didn't hate her like he hates with a visceral effect. You know, Jesus says, unless you, you know, hate your mother and father, you know, what he's saying is compared to me, your love for me. Okay, and that's what the Lord is saying here. In his love compared to Jacob, it looks like hate to Esau. Okay? And that's that's a complaint by many Christians. Or, or they say, I have a problem with that, that he's electing somebody before the foundation of the world, before they've even had a chance to uh, do anything. Um, he said he picked him out. Okay? So maybe this is what you say, verse 14. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. Okay? Now, we need that verse now. Shouldn't, shouldn't the, uh, the just uh, of all the earth do what's right? Huh? Okay? For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then, it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. Okay? Now, let's back up a little bit, too. Um, Jacob and Esau. Now, it wasn't them that willed, right, or runs. It wasn't up to their decision, right? It was God's decision and election. Okay? Matter of fact, we could even say this. Um... What did what does the word uh, what does Jacob mean? Yeah, deceiver, supplanter, cheater. Okay, that's what Jacob means. Guess what? That's what he was. Okay, but guess what? That's what I was. So what, yeah. Okay. So then, it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the Scripture saith unto Pharaoh. Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and on whom he will, he hardeneth. Okay? Now I just want to stop right there for a minute. Our mass of humanity. Okay. A lot of people here. Okay. Now, this mass of people, are they all sinners? <laughs> What about the unborn? The ones outside of this circle, okay, people here. If they all receive God's justice, is there anything simple about that? No. If the ones in the circle receive God's mercy, is there anything simple about that? No. No. Okay. Just making sure, okay? Verse 19, Thou wilt say unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? But nay, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say it to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the powder, powder over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another Unto dishonor. Okay? I want to stop right there. So how does he make one unto honor and another unto dishonor? Okay, the honor we can figure out probably, right? But the dishonor, does he do something? Does he... Okay, let's keep reading. 
What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? Um, I think I shared this with Sherry and Christine here a few months ago. That word endured is a passive verb. Okay? When you endure something, you let it take place. All right? So you take um, Pharaoh, for, for, Pharaoh, for example, or anybody else, anybody else, all the uh, evil they need is already within them. Okay? When you stand back and let them do what they want to do, it can come out. And matter of fact, um, they will even get harder if the grace that they do have, they don't have salvation grace, but they have a common grace, and that if that is taken away, they don't deserve a common grace even. Okay? Each, all men deserve death. But Pharaoh and everybody else have a common grace. The Bible says he causes this to reign on the, on the evil and the just, right? Evil and the good. Um, you know, you look at Pharaoh, you look at the Acts in the Bible, um, daylight was taken away from Pharaoh. Okay? That's God's good and pleasant grace upon Pharaoh. Um, God doesn't have to give that to him. He takes it away. Pharaoh doesn't like it, right? What happens? Does he repent to God and say, I'm sorry, I know you're God now? No. Okay? We'll get into reasons why <laughs> we, we would have denied about being born, but um, no, because he doesn't want to. Why he, why he uh, in a way, repents and says, okay, we'll, we'll let you go. They come back and he says, no, I'm not letting you go. He just wants his light back. Okay? All the time he's getting harder and harder. Okay? Now, so the Lord is enduring him. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? Okay? And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory. Okay? Election. Okay? Prepared unto glory. Prepared is a action verb. Okay? And then what we would have gotten into tonight is what he does to, to his elect or to his believers um, that are fallen men that he's elected is he gives them unconditional grace okay um that is an action he does um that's a preparation he actually does something to us he actually comes in and does something to our heart okay um the unbeliever um he wants to show his wrath and to make his power known he endures with much long suffering and they just do they go about to do what they're going to do okay 23 that he make know the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory. Even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. The fourth question was going to be God's sovereignty in the new, in the new birth in light of man's fallenness. And I'll just scroll down here so you can write down the verses and take them home. John 3, 1 through 8. Ezekiel 11. 17 through 20. And just listen to this verse 19 real quick. I'll read it. This is in the Old Testament. Listen to what the Lord says, and you hear the word I, not you, not us. Okay? And I will give them one heart, I, and I will put my new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Praise the Lord for that. Ezekiel 36, 25 through 27. Jeremiah 31, 31 through 33. I'll just read this real quick because it's short. John 1, 12 and 13. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Okay? Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Okay? Don't read them backwards like he believed and then you're born. Okay? Cause and effect you got to look at the cause and effect, 
Okay. If I, if, um, if I push this over, I was the cause and the effect was this falling over, right? Okay. The effect is verse 12, but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. What was the cause? Which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Ephesians 2, 1 through 9. Romans 11, 33 through 36. And we were going to get into, of course, uh, Romans uh, 3, um, being born again. Um, but we won't make it tonight. You have to read it for yourself. So, um, any questions, really quick, before we go? Did we answer the question? Did we answer the question? Okay. Now, how was a child uh, decided to go to heaven? What's the, what's the answer? Election. Now, so we're really we're back to the question. We don't know, right? <laughs> because, you know, may, maybe, I'm just putting this out there, maybe all the children that are unborn, maybe they're elect. I don't know. You know, I don't know. But it's a question that probably we can't, answer definitively, but we know that it's whoever God has elected. We know that it's whoever is born of the Spirit. You know, We know that they can be born of the Spirit in the womb, right? John the Baptist. Okay? So, um, the answer is, the only definitive answer we have in the Bible is that it's God's choice and God's election. So, we do know one that didn't make it from the womb, right? So we can't say that all did. Esau was not elect. Okay? Um, but to God be the glory.